Hi, Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. If you Google climate reanalyzer and look at the daily temperature, daily information, you get this type of thing here. And what, you, what I'm looking at is sea surface temperature anomaly. And what you can see is that the water in the Northern Pacific is quite warm, much, much warmer than normal. Uh, this is sea surface temperature anomaly, so much warmer than normal. This warm water is going through the Bering Strait, but it's restricted by the width of the strait. But look over here on the Atlantic side. We've got the Gulf Stream coming up here, and this warm water is winding all the way up here. And it's joining, there's water also very, very warm here, and it's all going up into the, um, into the Arctic. I mean, look at uh, the water here over Iceland. Look at the water here um, north of Svalbard. Okay, so because the Arctic is getting a much darker place, it's absorbing a lot more solar energy. And don't forget the sun's up 24 hours um, in the, in the uh, northern summers. And uh, so it's a, that, that uh, darker, those darker surfaces over both the land and ocean are absorbing a lot more energy. So the Arctic is warming and warming and warming, and that disrupts the jet streams. The jet streams circu circ circling the planet are much wavier, and the troughs are bringing cold air from the Arctic very, very far south, and the ridges going right up into the Arctic, even hitting the North Pole, are carrying warm air. There's also lots of moisture coming up so the, all this latent heat that is stored in the moisture, in the water vapor, is going up into the Arctic, bringing huge amounts of heat there. So what we're heading to very rapidly is a world with a very, very small temperature difference between the Arctic and lower latitudes. Um, so the jet streams will be, are, will, are, are going to be much, much, much slower basically remnants of their previous glory, uh, if they exist at all. Um, there probably will be some, um, or some other stable patterns will be set up, but we're losing, we've lost the climate stability so that we're seeing all of these extreme weather events increasing in frequency, severity, um, duration, and they're happening in different locations. Um, you can look at, uh, you know, all these different things, the snow depth, the jet streams here, uh, but there's much better images. Um, if we go to two meter temperature again, okay, and we come down here, okay, two, two meter temperature. Anomalies, there's the anomalies, this is what I wanted. Okay, you can see areas that are much warmer. The Arctic, 1.3 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal. Uh, in the next uh, few weeks, this number will probably head up to four degrees or something, four or five degrees uh, warmer than, than normal. Now, what I really wanna do is talk about Arctic sea ice. So if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, this is what you get here. So you can see all of the, this is the daily graphs. This is updated almost real time. And you can see the Arctic sea ice extent, which is the ocean with at least 15% sea ice area. And you can see the, um, the, the uh, different thicknesses, et cetera, um, temperature anomalies, uh, what's happening with the pressures and sea surface temperatures, all kinds of stuff here, okay? Um, you can also see the motion of the ice. So what you can do is go back to when that cyclone was occurring about a week ago, and it was over here. And because it's a low pressure area, the air all around is higher pressure by definition. That air moves in and things deflect to the right in the Northern Hemisphere. So it gets this pattern here and it gets tremendous export of ice out into the Atlantic. So that really did a number on the ice in 2012, there was a very, very large cyclone that was churning away for a long period of time, weeks, uh, you know, over a week, more, and it really did a number on the ice, and it caused 2012 to be a record low ice year, far exceeding 2007. 
Um, this particular cyclone didn't last as long and it's happening in June as opposed to August. So the ice has more structure than it would in, in uh, late August, but the jury is still out on, on what actually the damage that was done. Okay. Um, what I want to show you is, okay, on the Arctic sea ice graphs, I'll point out Arctic sea ice figures from Zach Laib, a graduate student at UC um, Irving, I believe, uh, Department of Earth Science, University of California, Irving. And this is the Arctic sea ice um, decline. Okay, um, this is a land ice in Antarctica and Greenland. Um, very good images of changes uh, all kinds of information and good visuals on how the Arctic sea ice is changing and basically how our world is changing. So this one here is the, the anomalies. So reds less than normal. An anomaly is always a subtraction. You take some long-term average, you take what happens now, subtract the long-term average. If you've lost ice, you get a negative number larger the negative number, the more ice you've lost. And you can see the reds coming in. You can see this really picked up. You know, there was some low years here in the late 80s through the 90s, you know, but in 2000, two, early 2000, it really started picking up. And 2007 was the minimum, 2012 was the minimum, 2016, okay? And it just, I mean, the ice is going. You were get, we're heading towards this blue ocean. The question is, how long will it take? Um, okay, so there's lots of good stuff here. Uh, you can go research areas. This is where we are right now. Um, you can get other um, changes in the timing of spring. So here we go, leaf, first leaf index, uh, climatological and the anomalies. Okay. Um, Okay, so the leaves are coming out earlier and earlier and earlier than normal. Um, here we go here. Okay, for the onset of spring. Um, sea ice uh, thickness. Okay, um, this is based on, I guess, some different papers here. Sea ice thickness. These are the different areas of the Arctic. Okay, um, and there's other stuff here, sea ice variability. Okay, so the variability is increasing. In, in system theory, you can talk about the frequency response of the system can slow down. The system can get sluggish just before it breaks. Think of your bending a stick back and forth. You know, eventually um, the, the molecules are in the stick are deforming and they're elastic uh, within an elastic regime uh, they come back they spring back but you reach a point where you start tearing the molecules apart and you lose resiliency the stick gets gets tougher to bend there and starts bending you know away from the area it was bending before and then the whole thing can just basically snap so you lose this um, you lose this elasticity um, so with the sea ice, you get, uh, if you get a, a drop and an increase and a drop, like you get these gyration, gyrations from year to year, and then you get a critical slowing down and, you know, you, it drops and it doesn't recover. Um, and then the system, uh, you pass a threshold, you get an abrupt change and the system's in a new state, uh, to a, a, a new state. So, so we're in this instability region. We were, the old state was stable, what we're used to, what our grand, what our, our, um, what our kids, basically what our parents um, and their parents, um, you know, the, the stable environment, the stable planet, stable climate that they had, and we're heading into a haywire, uh, weirding, global weirding, climate casino, uh, whip, weather whiplashing, extreme weather events, very, very unstable system. Um, so that leaves the question, do, can we restore climate to stability so that our kids and our kids' kids uh, can enjoy a stable climate, intergenerational equity? That's a big question. 
Um, I'll just, I'm not going to talk about that too much now, but uh, I'll just refer you, just Google Healthy Climate Alliance and ha have a look at their, their uh, stuff. Now on the um, Arctic sea ice graphs, if there's a blog, which I'm going to talk about here, and the forum. So on the blog, okay, this, gives, this is a June update on the blog. So it talks about the massive cyclone bot bottoming out at 966 hexapascals. I showed you that on Earth Null School. Okay, the one in August 2016 was, was um, this is slightly lower than the 968 at the end of August 2016, and there was a great Arctic cyclone of 2012, 963 hexapascal, that really did a number on the ice. So this is an image of, of the low that was reached and where, where it is located in the, in, the, in the basin. Okay, and it talks about the sea ice thickness and the volumes and, you know, how, um, how it's changing seasonally. So these are all different years, 2018 here. Um, so we're not in a record minimum. This shows a progression from day to day of the storm, of the low of the storm. And there's another one coming, apparently. And the ice is thick there. So when the cyclone is thicker there than in other areas. So when the cyclone came through this area, it, it, affects the, it affected the thickest ice. Now the last thing I want to show you is the Arctic Sea Ice Forum. So if you just click on there, then you get this. So, so here's the forum. Okay, I, I go back to the bottom. And so basically, this is the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. Okay, you can see all this heat coming in through the Bering Strait. All this heat, as I mentioned on earlier, coming up through and coming into the Arctic. So there's heat, a lot of heat transport in the ocean currents, also in the atmosphere, because any ridges that go up into the Arctic, they're bringing hot air and moisture up into the Arctic. Any troughs are bringing cold, drier air further south, which is also causing a warming of the Arctic. Okay, so there's lots of people posting here. The caliber is very, very high. Okay, lots of stuff. Here's a person who's following the Gulf Stream saying it's increased 0.4 kilometers an hour. Um, five day current and SST update has happened. It's gone up another 0.4 kilometers per hour, 7.4 here. Okay, so it is going north and it's going up into the Arctic worldview. Lots of good images. Here is an image of, uh, I thought there was an image of snow cover. Okay, people have their own sort of things that they track and they give updates. Uh, A team, really good stuff. Okay, um, there was, okay, there's so snow thickness. Okay, how snow thickness is changing. This is from about June 13th, uh, projected out to June 21st. So when you have a much warmer, uh, you know, as long as you're below zero, the closer you get to zero, the more likely it is to snow. So if you get all this moisture going up and it's very, very cold, it's not likely to snow, but if it's, uh, and there won't be as much moisture in the air, but if, you, if you're approaching zero, but still below, you can get lots of snow. And that snow is highly reflective and can, so, so the weather conditions, local weather conditions in the Arctic are very important for determining how much ice melt there will be. Um, lots of worldview stuff. Okay, here's an image of snow cover. Okay, so this view is that there won't be, okay, this is a, I recognize this hand and this shirt, okay? Zero, this is a video I did a while ago, zero Arctic sea ice very likely by 2020, and I still stand by that could be 2022, you know, certainly, you know, the next four or five years, it's very, very high, highly, it's a probability game and the probability or risk of losing the, the sea ice uh, in the summer, having completely open Arctic Ocean is getting ever higher. So this guy is saying, well, you can't extrapolate a trend like that. Yeah, I mean, it's a short, you know, the trend is going to zero if the trend continues, it'll hit zero, but there could be some feedbacks, for example, and, and this argument is that it's warmer there, there's more snow, the snow can f cover the land um, and ice, and it, that can uh, bend that curve up a little bit. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye for now.